That's where we find Immigration Minister Sean Fraser, who's just outside of the, the room, I believe, that everyone will be dining in. Minister, great pleasure to see you. Thank you for making the time. It's a pleasure to be with you, Vashi. Thanks for having me. I, I imagine it's difficult to hear me, uh, so, so I do appreciate you making the effort. Um, I just wanted to, you know, the announcement on your file is a very significant one today. Can you explain clearly for Canadians what happens as of midnight tonight? Uh, certainly. So the Safe Third Country Agreement has been expanded, and as of 12.01 uh, a.m. tomorrow morning, the same rules that currently apply at official points of entry will apply in between points of entry. Uh, this means that uh, people who come to make an asylum claim in Canada uh, will be able to do so if they qualify for one of the exemptions, uh, but will not be able to uh, enter into Canada if they had the ability to make an asylum claim in another safe country uh, on the way, in particular with respect to this agreement, the United States. Uh, in addition, Canada has agreed to welcome 15,000 newcomers to our country uh, from the region that is uh, uh, primarily responsible for people who are fleeing violence uh, or persecution that are making their way to seek asylum in the first place. We're doing what we can to strengthen the border, but at the same time continue to be welcoming and to build capacity in the region to help address the systemic issue of irregular migration more broadly. Uh, when you say that you're going to welcome 15,000 uh, from those areas that are affected, do you mean, for example, Central America? Like, it, it, is it that specific, or are, are those details not, not it, uh, yet finalized? Uh, the program has not yet been developed. I anticipate it will disproportionately reflect migrants from Central and South America, uh, or perhaps Haiti in particular, given the uh, specific country uh, situation that we're dealing with on the ground and the obvious connection between uh, communities in Canada and the people of Haiti. We do have program design details that we need to develop in the next uh, number of weeks, but as we have the information available about how people can qualify for these regular pathways to Canada, we'll of course make them available so people can plan accordingly and avail themselves of the opportunity to seek Canada's protection through regular migration channels. Uh, your government has been working on this issue, attempting to modernize the agreement for years. I was saying to our panelists, I remember interviewing your predecessor, I think back in 2018, about the issue. Um, did you think when you left Washington, I think it was a week ago, a week and a half ago, that, that you would have a deal, an, an agreement in place today? Uh, not necessarily. I, I sense that we had an excellent partner in the United States, and particularly I should say thank you to Secretary Mayorkas for his leadership on this file. Uh, but where things really started to move from my point of view was after we had a conversation not just about the Safe Third Country Agreement or Roxham Road, but we communicated Canada's desire to be a supportive partner on the issue of irregular migration more broadly. We actually had a follow-up conversation about uh, uh, two weeks ago, uh, a little bit less in fact, uh, where we had the opportunity to discuss what further options Canada has to continue to support the United States and the hemisphere more broadly, including the possibility of welcoming more people through regular channels. It was during that follow-up conversation that I felt confident we were going to be able to land an agreement in advance of this visit, which I did not think, frankly, was likely to happen uh, before that particular moment. Uh, we should also expect uh, that despite the fact we've made significant progress on this file with the conclusion of the Safe Third Country Agreement negotiations, that this is an issue we're going to have to continue to wrestle with. The global trend is that migration will continue to become an increasing challenge in the years ahead. So in addition to welcoming 15,000 people to Canada, we need to be making the investments to help build capacity in the region to develop asylum systems in other parts of the world and also provide people with information about how they can uh, take advantage of pathways that do open up to protect some of the world's most vulnerable. Are you concerned at all about um, the people who will now be turned back to the United States and the, you know, uh, the reasons that they were leaving there and trying to seek their asylum in Canada versus the United States? Like, if they don't feel that they'll be able to uh, get the kind of protections and, and life that they were hoping for in the United States, and that's why they were coming here, but now we're going to turn them back, are you concerned about and are there any sort of mitigating efforts in place to try and help them, really? Um, certainly, uh, we're concerned about the well-being of vulnerable people who, regardless of which country they may be uh, landing in or, or passing through, who don't have an opportunity to stay in their home country. We need to do more to continue to uh, address this issue at the source by uh, tackling the reasons why people flee in the first place. Uh, but we're going to continue to review our practices and policies to see how we can continue to be one of the most welcoming countries in the world. But one of the things that we wanted to signal with our commitment to welcome at least an additional 15 
15,000 people from the region, is that there are opportunities to seek Canada's protection. But doing it in an irregular and un unorganized way puts pressure on communities that do not allow us to treat people with the respect and dignity that they deserve. When people enter Canada in an irregular way, it puts enormous pressure on communities and on social services and on the health care system and on the education system. If we can plan accordingly and welcome people through regular channels and communicate the legal pathways people can take to migrate through these regular channels to Canada, we'll be able not only to welcome a larger number of people, but to treat them with a greater degree of dignity and uh, uh, respect by providing them with the very basics that they need, including supports that will help them integrate more successfully into communities. We're going to continue to review the impact of the changes to the agreement in the weeks and months ahead in hopes we can treat people uh, with the respect they deserve. I was just going to say respectfully, Minister, that if they do go through the regular channels, I mean, what the Safe Third Country Agreement stipulates is that they will be turned back, right? Like, even if they are seeking asylum, they come to the border at an official point of entry. The, the, the agreement dictates that they're going to be turned back to the United States. So, so it's not, you know, I take your point on how they could go through official channels, but if they really won't. It's important that uh, we understand the reason why we're able to treat the uh, United States as a party to the Safe Third Country Agreement. The United States has one of the most robust uh, asylum systems of uh, uh, any country in the world. Uh, we're going to continue to work with them as a partner, uh, but we want to maintain the principle that when a person flees uh, for very good reason from their country of origin to seek the protection in another country, uh, the practice that we're trying to promote is to make an asylum claim in the first country where they're safe. If they're desire is to come to Canada, we want to promote the idea that you should use regular migration channels. These are extremely challenging circumstances that people are facing, but by working with the United States to make sure that we continuously review one another's asylum system, we can ensure that we're dealing with people who have an opportunity to make a claim in the country where they're first safe. And of course there are exemptions to the deal for people who have family members who are in Canada, unaccompanied minors and other categories, for those who it may not make sense to make an asylum claim in the United States, that there'll be a residual ability to pursue asylum in Canada. Uh, there are no such things as perfect solutions when it comes to a global challenge of irregular migration, but I'm convinced that the agreement that we reach with the United States is going to help prevent so many people from making the decision to take an, a long and often perilous journey that threatens the lives and well-being of themselves and, and their families as well. Okay, Minister, I'm going to leave it there. I'm out of time. Thank you very much for your time and, and enjoy the dinner tonight. Thank you. Uh, pleasure as always. Thank you for having me, Vashi.